So, as a data analyst, it is important for me to have a concrete workflow. It ensures that I have a direction when I start a new project. It also helps me get the best results by covering all the grounds and bases so I don't miss anything. A workflow is essentially a system that is used to manage processes and tasks that are repetitive that occur within a particular order. I also think it's important for you to know that a workflow is just a guide. Sometimes it's better if you just break the lines of the workflow or go outside the boundaries of a specific workflow. It helps you get a better analysis and you know, different projects have different specifications and requirements. So it's best to understand that your workflow can be flexible. All right, great. Now let's talk about my specific workflow. So my workflow is based off the Google Data Analytics certification workflow. Essentially, it's divided into six stages, the ask, prepare, process, analyze, share, and act. This personally works best for me, but there's so many other workflows out there that you can design or cater to, such as the Cava workflow, which is collect, analyze, visualize, and apply. I recommend sampling a couple workflows and figure out what works best for you. It gives you a general routine or step-by-step -step procedure to follow, so it is important to have a backbone or a guide to your project. Now let's move into the stages of my workflow. So first, we go into the ask phase. So for this internship, all my tasks are listed on Trello and my supervisors are very clear with what they wanna achieve. So I always reread the Trello task a couple times just so I understand the business task and the end goal. I always begin with the end in mind. So it's important for me to understand the business task or the end goal from the start. While doing this, I like to take notes on my iPad. Taking notes at this stage is essential. I spend about five to 10 minutes at this stage writing down my ideas, thoughts, mind maps, questions, etc. This gives me a general idea of what to expect, such as data types, data processes, processes, data analysis techniques, data size, etc. It also helps me better structure my questions, which is the next step. So now that I have a general idea of what's going on and what the business task is, I write down questions. So my questions follow a specific structure. So I always write down the questions I intend to explore or answer on my iPad at the beginning of the analysis. This allows me to get all the kinks out of the way before we even start. For example, sometimes I might need more information and I'll find out if I need more information at this stage. And if I do, I reach out to my supervisor or stakeholder and ask for more information. This is so much more time efficient and saves me from a headache later on. So the type of questions I ask typically involve a following structure. I like to follow Simon Sinek's start with why technique. I think this is super important in anything in life, but specifically as a data analyst, I always like to start with why. Once I understand the why, I can get the how and the what. This is the golden circle rule. In case you were wondering, I learned this from Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. If you can understand the why, you then understand the business task. This then gives you an idea on how to do the project. And then once you have the how, you can understand the what. I know this might be a little confusing at first, so let me give you an example. For this project specifically, the why is based on our current mission for the department. So our department is looking to expand internationally because the majority of the sales come from the US and you want to expand the company overall. So the insights that come from this analysis will be crucial in designing a marketing campaign that allows our company to grow and advance overseas. So I always like to go back to the mission statement. The mission statement can change over time, but our company has specific mission statements for each department. So for our company, the part of the mission statement that applies to this analysis is to inspire innovation. So my why for this project is to increase our digital presence so that we can inspire innovation more broadly. So now that we know the why, we can move on to the how. So from this, I believe we can use geological data to design campaigns and strategies specifically targeted to various different locations, cultures, backgrounds, ethnicities, educations, etc. The key word here is geological data. We use geological data to achieve our why. With that, our project is coming more to life and we have a clearer vision of how we're gonna achieve the why. So now that we know our how, we can then define our what. So I define our what as to analyze our company's geological data so that we can increase our digital presence and inspire innovation everywhere. So now that we have a backbone to our analysis, we can design more specific questions that lead to a deeper analysis so that we can achieve more valuable insights from it. Next, we move on to the prepare phase. So now that we have our questions listed out, we can then collect and prepare our data to analyze. So for this specific internship, we use Google Analytics as our tool of choice. And it's pretty easy to export data from Google Analytics. So for example, I can export location data and language data within specific time ranges that I can use for a more comprehensive analysis. So the prepare phase also typically involves some data cleaning. This could include, you know, cleaning up variable names or formatting columns, data types, etc. So for our data specifically, I cleaned it in Google Sheets. So now we go on to the processing phase. So processing the data helps us get more meaningful data that can allow us to answer our questions in a more valuable or meaningful manner. So if I just left the data as it is, I would have a big data set of sales data and I could get some insights from there, maybe here and there, but those insights wouldn't tell me a lot. It wouldn't be able to answer our business task. This is why we need to manipulate the data. So some forms of data manipulation include merging or joining data sets, 
You know, sometimes you just have to select or filter specific columns or variables. Even the simple act of sorting data is considered data manipulation. So now that we've processed our data and we have a more meaningful data set, we can then get insights from that data set through the analysis phase. One of the techniques I used for this project was data aggregation. So I managed to get some interesting insights from aggregating the data per county, per city, per state, even per country. We can definitely go even deeper to get more specific insights. So for example, I managed to get more specific results by aggregating the data per month to understand the sales per country per month even sales per country per year or sales per country per season. I did the same thing for city, county, state, etc., so that I can better understand the whole picture overall. Other forms of analysis techniques could even include five number summaries, visualizing the data, you know, identifying outliers. The goal here is to answer, understand, or make sense of our business task. So whatever we have to do to derive patterns or understand it, we can do it here. It is also important to note that the answers to our business task might not be that straightforward. It's not always binary, it's not always a yes or no. Sometimes the answer could simply be that we need to do more research, we don't have enough evidence, or we need to change or shift our focus to something else. Great, now that we've analyzed our data and got some insights, we come to the share phase. So the whole point of this phase is to gather and collect the insights that we've derived in an organized manner. So throughout the other processes, I usually like to leave comments or take notes on my iPad about insights that I found interesting, curious, etc. I like using Kaggle for my personal project for this specific reason. I could just leave a comment there that looks visually pleasing when I do my report. It's easier for me overall. And I'll definitely make a video in the future on how I use Kaggle to do my projects. It is important to present our insights in a manner that is cohesive and organized to only include important or relevant information. This allows our stakeholders to be directly led to the takeaways or conclusions of our analysis. I'm very, very blunt when I write my reports. I don't see a point in fluffing up the reports to include irrelevant or unimportant information. I believe it only hinders their understanding of my analysis and pushes them away from my takeaways altogether. You can also use visualizations where it's necessary. Sometimes visualizations help people get to the conclusion faster, but it is also important to use the right visualizations. Some graphs or charts can be misleading. I'll leave a link in the description below on how charts lie and how that can be damaging to your report and your overall analysis. This is one of the most important phases of the whole workflow altogether. If we fail to do a good job presenting our insights, our stakeholders can act on those insights, or at least they can act well on those insights. This is one of the most important skills of a data analyst or a data scientist. In fact, I'm trying my best to continuously improve my presentation skills, and I started this YouTube channel as a way to do that. At this stage, I also find it incredibly helpful to know or understand your audience. By understanding our audience, we can better craft our report to suit them and help them get the right takeaways. For example, if your audience comes from a non-technical background, it is useless to use technical terms unless you translate them in a meaningful way so that our audience can understand. Again, the goal is to maximize their takeaway. So whatever you can do to craft a better presentation so that they can maximize their takeaway, that's what you should be doing. Also, if you guys have any suggestions on how I can improve my presentation skills, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm happy to take in any feedback at all. And for those of you who are also interested in this topic and want to learn too, here's a book I recommend. It's called Making Numbers Count, and it's by Chip Heath and Carla Starr. Lastly, we're at the act phase. And most of the time in this stage, your stakeholders will decide who needs to act and what they should do. In your takeaways, if you understand the situation well enough, it is important for you to clearly list out who needs to act, what they should do, and how they should do it. All right, so that's about it for this video. I hope it gave you some perspective on my workflow when it comes to data analysis. Just to reiterate, if you don't have a designated system or workflow when it comes to data analysis, I strongly recommend you get one. In fact, you can try the techniques I listed out in this video just to see if they work well with you. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.